Hello everyone and welcome to the BU podcast. This episode is all about being an international student. My name's Riley, I'm your host today and I'm joined by three very lovely guests. So we'll get some introductions done, starting with you. So can you tell us your name, your course and where you're from? <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Christina Gilarova and uh, I'm a Czech student from Czech Republic and I'm currently in my third year of music performance. Lovely, thank you. And you? Hi, I'm Esperanza Navajas, I'm from Spain, and I'm studying musical theatre or triple threat, and I'm in my second year. Awesome. And Hello, I am Issa Mohamed, I'm studying Master's in International Business, and it's a one-year course. I'm also from Nigeria. Awesome. Well, yeah. welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. See you. <laughs> so, um, we'll start with, with you, Christina, as that's where we started earlier. Um, why did you want to study in the UK? So my story began when uh, I always loved music and I studied uh, hotel high school, which kind of gave me like a two main roads where to go if to gastronomy and this kind of industry or music. And when I was searching for uh, music schools and universities in my country, it was very hard to get in and the pressure was really you know, hard. And uh, I know, I knew that at the time I wasn't ready to get in, but I knew that I have the passion and I wanted to learn. So the thought of me, you know, preparing a couple of years to actually get to the University of Music or college or whatever, it was very, very hard for me. So when I uh, found that there are universities abroad and, the, you know, they have music courses which are uh, just for like three years or four years and you don't actually have to have all the knowledge before you go because especially this university offers and they are saying like oh yeah we just want people who have the passion we want them to show everything you know so I applied uh, here and I was very happy about it. Oh brilliant yeah. well we're glad to have you here so <laughs> how about you Esperanza? Um, well I have a um, previous story of studying in the UK because I started studying a law degree mm -hmm. previously like seven years ago which is quite a long time already um, but before that I had the idea of studying dance which was my passion in the UK I don't know why I used to look in for courses in London but I don't know life is different and then I signed up for law in Spain in my home city and all that so I decided to do an Erasmus program um, and yeah I ended up uh, studying in the University of Sussex in Brighton for one year and I loved it. Mm -hmm. I realized the educational system was very, very different from home and that it kept me way more motivated and way more focused on goals and, I don't know, open-minded. So I did apply to stay in the UK um, to study international relations there in the University of Sussex. And I got upset, but um, I found out that I didn't have uh, financial help, so I had to come back to Spain. So then is when I discovered a little bit of musical theatre and the fact that you can actually study it and make a career out of it because in Spain I just didn't have that information. Um, so I've continued studying law and I applied to do several auditions in the UK. Um, and that's how I came to study a full degree in the UK and here I am. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. awesome. That's cool. And Issa, what about you? Um... I've always wanted to do my master's because I had my undergraduates in Nigeria. I studied economics for four years. Then after that, you, if you were to do your master's in Nigeria, you would need to spend two years or more to mm. do your master's in Nigeria. But here, it's just a year. Mm. And the reason it's two years or more in Nigeria is because we have things like strike, where the universities have issues with the government or the ruling parties in the country, and then they try to fight or argue, and then it has a high impact on us, the students, and I did not want that. So I decided to come to the UK to do my master's. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So why did all of you choose uh, Chichester in, in particular? Mine was based in audition experience, um, because for performance, musical theatre, in my course you need to audition for it, and you had to do an in-person audition, I was lucky enough that it was just before COVID hit <clears throat> deeply so I could come here. And it was just the best audition I had. It wasn't yeah. because I did the best, it's just because I, feel, I felt good. I felt good with people, I felt accepted. 
Um, <coughs> it was a chill vibe. It was good level. And there were different people. Because it is a thing for vocational schools or like performing arts schools. Like you go there and you feel a little bit rejected. You feel a little bit of competition wise. Same kind of bodies, uh, mentalities. I just don't fit in there. And here it was way more diverse. And that is important for me. So, so you just got a nice good vibe when you first came in. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm about that. It. I like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I guess, did you have to do auditions for yours? Yeah, so my story is a little bit uh, different because I got help in Czech Republic. There is a there is a group I would like to mention. They, they're called Unilink. It's like a support center and it's... Uh, it's run by actual students who were studying abroad and they created this support group called Unilink and uh, they are helping with all the students who want to apply to any universities which they are um, connected, you know. So they helped me to fill the application, they uh, sent me all the courses, so I was looking for music, uh, not music teaching, but music and not music production so it was very like specific what I wanted to do and they just helped me with everything and then there was like a package of three or four universities to apply because you have to pay for the application so it included more universities and I uh, I received like pre-accepted offer from three out of four universities oh. so then it was a tough decision to kind of be like okay where to go because Anything I knew was just the websites. Yeah. So then my family, we just made like a road trip to see actually the universities and see how it looks like, you know. And then Chichester is the most, like the oldest one and smallest. Also, the city is kind of boring, but it's not. But, you know, everyone, <laughs> every student who goes there, they've been told that it's like kind of quiet and stuff. And we just, I love it, you know, it's, it's really nice. And... Um, when I saw this whole like art department for musicals, actors, um, also the production behind it and everything, you can just study anything. Um, that's when it hit me. I was like, oh, it was obvious from the beginning that this is the university I want to go because the department of art is so big. Yeah, nice. yes. yeah it's a great department. Yeah. So you, you touched on there about what the application process was like for you. Was there anything else that you had to kind of go through at all? So... Um, the application, I didn't do audition. I kind of did, but it was online. So I had to send some of my music, some of my original stuff I recorded or something, and then live video of me performing. And then there was the cover letter with why I want to study, what do I want to do with the degree and stuff. So it was more just like a showcase, like a big showcase of stuff I, I've done. Yeah. Yeah, and how about you with the application process? So you had your audition, was there anything else that you had to submit? Yes, I think I did uh, submit a cover letter, but that was a standard for any kind of application in any other uni. Uh, what I did have to get was my IELTS um, certificate, because mm -hmm. I thought that maybe with the Cambridge one um, of English it, it would be enough, because that's what like, is more recognised in Spain as like, how to prove your English level. Um, but I think specifically for what level was required to study in here, they prefer the IELTS academic. Mm -hmm. So I had to, I don't, I don't know if it was like over six percent. Yeah, something like that. But I had to get it over summer online in the middle of COVID. Um, I wish I'd known that before. <laughs> I would have done it before. It's <laughs> oh. so a handy tip for anyone listening to this. Yeah, <laughs> get your eye on too. Was it similar for you? Yeah, me too. The same thing. Um, when I was applying to, I needed to submit my IELTS, and just like she said, above six. If you have below six for academy, you're not be able to come in. So I submitted my IELTS, my because I already did undergraduate, so I submitted my transcripts. Mm -hmm. That's for all the courses mm -hmm. I did. Then my official certificate from my undergraduate university, and then that was it. And I just applied online, and then Pivy, Rachel, and mm. other people from the from the school they helped me online. Everything mm. I needed, they would tell me. Even up to the point of my visa, like when I was at the visa application point, I was like, "What do I need to carry?" She would tell me. Oh, it was wow. really cool. So, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. really supportive. Yeah, really, really yeah, supportive. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah, yes. I didn't have to yeah. do my IELTS. 
No, wow. no, I didn't. No oh. <laughs> you made me pay. Ah, yes. <laughs> in, wow. in my country, we have like a four years of high school, which is kind of like a, equal to your college. Yeah. And uh, there is like a final exam, which is like A levels, which yeah. was apparently enough, but I had to do it for like the one or two. Uh, mark you know the d degree which i kind of was in the limit which was nice but i didn't have to do this one wow because wow. mm. <laughs> ah, so you have to pay for it right yes i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's one of my friends my my housemate she she had the ha the cambridge one but she had the highest yeah. so that was enough to prove her for english level english, but yeah. i had one more average okay, it was not so. high enough yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we need to wow. prove it, need to prove it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I know you've only been here for two months, but have you enjoyed your time at Chichester so far? Wonderful, my God. Everybody here is so happy. How do you do, <laughs> how do, you do it? How do you do it? I don't think I've met one unhappy person. The vibe is just... <laughs> this place feels like home, away from home. It's, at times, it feels more home than where I come from. Because, yeah, because at times at home, there are people that are unhappy for one or two reasons, and they like to, you know transfer their anger on you. But yeah, nobody does mm. that. Mm. Even if people have problems, you can't tell everybody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm having, I've been, I lived at Portsmouth for a month. Mm -hmm. I came to Chichester on the 24th. That's the first day of my induction. Mm -hmm. And I moved to Chichester that day oh because I saw everybody was so happy. I was like, I'm not leaving this place. No. Yeah. <laughs> I went to Portsmouth, I packed my stuff and I've been here since. Yeah. yeah. Not looking back? Like not looking, nope. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it makes me so happy to yeah. hear. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. And how about you both, yeah. Christina? Um, so what was the question? How's your time at Chichester been? Oh, yeah, it's been, it's been great. It's, uh, I've stayed in the Stockbridge Halls of Residence in my first year, which was kind of nice to you know, hang out all the new students together. And this year I'm uh, staying very close to university, just five minutes by walk, which is even more wonderful, you mm -hmm. know? you. you just you just wake up and in ten minutes you're at yeah, uni cool. at, at your lecture, which is which is great, and yeah, I really like that uh, the city, city. It's a city because yes. there is a cathedral. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's been safe like the whole time for me, mm. and uh, there are nice places where to go, takeouts, and it's not. Uh, it's not that wild and busy. So like if I go, if I was walking alone like at midnight from campus to Stockbridge. I wasn't afraid. Mm -hmm. It's just one main road. There are like lights everywhere. I know that I'm one of the lucky ones because I had very like straightforward way home, but it was, it was quite good. Yeah, I, I felt safe, which is very like important yeah. for everyone, not just for girls, everyone. but for everyone to feel safe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Esperanza, yeah. have you enjoyed your time? Uh, yeah, I love it here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, so far it's been almost two years. And the main part of my experience of like, if I'm enjoying it, it's my course and the people there is very nice. I love everyone there. Um, the only thing is like, for example, last year you were talking about um, your halls and everything. I got into a rented house because I'm older. I'm, I'm 24 now, I'm very old. And I thought like, okay, I'm not gonna do halls this time. But that, um, was a bit difficult in the sense of um, we were a bit isolated because everybody else was in halls mm -hmm. and it was COVID time, so you cannot visit people in halls if you were not from halls. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't have like the best social life in first year. And especially Bognor campus is a little bit more reduced in events and social life and all that. But it is very nice in other stuff because it's smaller, it's quieter, it's very chill. Yeah. You have the beach at like 10 minutes away from you. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. Yeah. That's a good pro. I'll yeah. stay with you. Um, what what yeah. would you say like it's like being an international student? Being an international student? Oh, it's challenging. <laughs> it's challenging. I'm not going to say everything is very nice. It is. It is because um, thankfully in this university, there's very good um, atmosphere for international students and everybody's going to recognize that you come from other place and you have different situations going on at times. Um, but in my course, for example, I find challenge being being international student, not by the teachers, but like 
what becoming an actor is going to be mm. for me. Because I, obviously, I have normal level of English and all that, but I struggle a lot with my diction. And that closes a little bit more um, my options of being, like, um, broad um, actor, fully trained and all that. So I'm really trying to keep up with mm. normal English people born here. That wasn't very well phrased. <laughs> okay, that, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> yeah, I do find I have some challenges uh, from just my mm, my origin in terms mm -hmm. of what's my first language, what's my second language yeah. is. And um, we do have long days, days sometimes, and that is hard because yes. at some <laughs> point your head doesn't take any more English oh, and yeah. you're like if you want to explain something to me you have to stop speaking Spanish <laughs> <laughs> you need to <laughs> no I yeah. wish <laughs> it's just keywords oh not, yeah not sentence not full sentence mm. just buzzwords <laughs> yeah you're rehearsing and they're like it's 8pm and you're like I don't know what you're saying now but I'll keep going <laughs> okay <laughs> So, and what about for you? How has um, it been? Let's see. In my class, we are all international students. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So um, I have we are we have like four of us from Pakistan. Then me and one of my classmates from Nigeria. Then another one she's from Spain. Mm -hmm. So we are all international students, oh, and we are special. all exotic. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so it's really nice. Yeah. And it's challenging too, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. We all push it. Up. We we all push each other, mm -hmm. and we all want to learn better. And you know. Yeah. They move and we're doing really well. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool that you've yeah. got that support with each yeah, other. Really, yeah, really, seriously. We have like a group chat. We talk about everything. Lecturers always have wonderful things to say about us. Like they tell us in class, they're like, we do our assignments, we do our formatives really well. They're enjoying us. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> and Christina, really cool. what's your experience been like with being an international student? Um, I have so many like uh, funny stories because I misunderstand so many things <laughs> and my friends they know it and they're just laughing you know and they we kind of found a way of communicating because I say something it means something different but they know what I'm saying you know <laughs> and it's just we have like a list with my housemates of stuff that I've said like wrong or I wow. you know like what like um Oh, I, I, I don't want to say anything right now, <laughs> but it's, you know, it could be another podcast for that, but uh, it's, yeah. I think this is like one of the funny parts here that mm -hmm. if I say something wrong, you know, people are laughing, but they're laughing like with me, not, mm -hmm. not behind my back yeah. or anything, yeah. you know, and they're just happy to explain everything and um, yeah, so this is like the, the funny part, but as a singer, I'm struggling also with the lyrics, mm -hmm. with the pronunciations, and sometimes I'm like so confident about the word and then the vocal teacher is like actually it's something <laughs> different if you're saying like that it means something different and oh. <laughs> i was like okay okay well so it's it's really hard for me and mm. as you were saying about the time and when you're tired oh God. Uh, sometimes like the head is so tired that mm. you just you just you don't think even in your like first language <laughs> yeah not thinking. you, you want to say something and it's not working you know so sometimes i just say the keywords from the sentence and you know, my housemates, they, they know what I want to say, yeah. you know, because it's really, it's really difficult. And, it is. But it's fun. Yeah, yeah, like everyone is very accepting and it, it's yeah. fun. It's nothing to be like afraid um, if, yeah. if it's not Definitely. your first language, yeah. you know, and just have yeah. some fun. Yeah. <laughs> was that going to be, was that one of your concerns moving to the UK and studying in the university? Um, about the English point of view, I, I was quite... I felt I was quite confident because I had some experience with international students in my country and I was also good in English. I enjoyed like speaking with foreigners and stuff. But when I came here, because most of the students here are British, mm -hmm. it's different than being in other big university because, you know, in, for example, in Middlesex, Middlesex University in London, uh, there are so many internationals. So if you speak to someone, like they have different accents and everything, but yeah. here it's usually British. So it was quite, uh, I understood that my English wasn't that good as I thought, but, and I, I mean, I'm still struggling after three years, but I, but I'm not mad about it because I'm just like, okay, you can't compete with them, you know, because they, it's their first language. So yeah, it's fine. But when we were talking about the, when we were tired and stuff, I was dreaming in English and I didn't understand the dream, <laughs> you know, but you just hear like murmuring, the people yeah, are talking, yeah. you know, in the back and then it was in my dream and I was like, 
What? It must be so confusing to wake up from. (laughs) But it's kind of like a state when you, uh, when you're abroad for, it's usually like three months. Yeah. Then your brain kind of switches into this mode where you're Mm. thinking it in the second language, not your first language. Um, Apart if you have your (laughs) national days. Yeah, Yeah. there's national days. But sometimes (laughs) like every note I make, uh, like on my computer or something, it's usually in English. I'm thinking in English if what I'm going to... you know, say to my friends and stuff. So yeah, you just kind of really there is the switch, which is, which is a benefit if you're like abroad for longer than just a month or something, because you need to switch to understand the culture and everything. Yeah. And do you think you settled in well in the UK? Sorry. Do you think you settled into the UK well? Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, did you have any concerns coming to study over here? Oh sorry. Did you concerns. have any concerns? Oh uh, yes. Mine were musical theatre related because mm-hmm. I I don't have a big musical theatre background like my course mates. Like they come from colleges and they've done a lot of shows and all that. In Spain, I didn't really have the chance to do that. I did one year of musical theatre, which it was very random. We didn't know that much about musical <laughs> theatre. We just put dance and sing together as Sounds we fun. could. <laughs> it was fine. But um, I was a commercial dancer. I wasn't even like a ballet and jazz dancer or anything like that. And I wasn't a singer at all. So basically, I felt like I didn't have anything to offer. So that was my main concern. I was like, oh, I need to train. I need to train. Um, but at the end of the day, you come here and you realize you do, a stu- you do have stuff to offer and you do have experience, especially because I'm old. I'm an oldie. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. But <laughs> you do have a lot to offer. Um, you just have to translated to this new art form, which is musical theatre, that I haven't done that much. Um, yeah, that was my main concern. I was, I thought I was confident, confident about English. <laughs> yeah, I was not that much. <laughs> I wasn't that good. <laughs> Just because when I, when I was studying in Brighton, it was fine. At the end of the year, so I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I've already gone through that. So I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be fine. And I'm not going to be talking about law anymore. So I'm, I'm good with that. But um, yeah, there are days that it doesn't get in, but most mm-hmm. days it's good and you get better. And suddenly you, you realize that you've done all your classes without any problem. You haven't had any problems understanding teachers or um, your colleagues are very good with you. So yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it's all great good now. experience. And did you find you settled in really well to the UK? Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, I did live here before. Yeah, of course. And it was a big of a problem. I, I love living here. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it sounds like you've settled in here really well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really does. Did you have concerns about moving um, to the UK? English is my first language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't have, I did not have any concerns with English, the language. The only concerns I have is the fact that I am not going to be with my family mm-hmm. for the time of my study. Yeah, for my master's. So mm-hmm. apart from that, I really couldn't wait to come here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah. that's just it. Um. What is the support like for international students? So you touched mm. on that earlier. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we have people like Pivy. Mm. Yeah. Was it Pivy that helped you guys? Um, yes, it's Pivy and Jane. Yeah, yeah Pivy and yeah, Jane. They're really they're lovely. Wonderful. Yeah. They are really, really, really nice. <laughs> they do everything. Like, whatever you want, no matter how crazy or off or <laughs> unimportant it sounds, they would help you. So they're, they're just perfect. I don't, I don't know if they can do better. <laughs> like, like, yeah, the like him, yes so yeah. uh, they sure. do really well so it's a really good sound vibe yeah. for the uni yeah. <laughs> yeah. they really try yeah. Yeah. how about you are uh, there i i can only talk well about them they're a lovely lovely team yeah. um i haven't had many problems so they haven't had that much to uh, help me with you know. that but um anything you can talk with them um they tell mm-hmm. you come over or they will yeah. call you they're very, very nice. Uh, in terms of international support, they are the best for academic. And they have been doing these online huddles and all that to try to um, make us acquainted with all the international students and all oh, that. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I haven't been able to go so much at, uh, to them. So sorry, Pivy and Jane. <laughs> uh, but um, because we thought like... Uh, um, sorry. Okay. Now... <laughs> um, another student I thought um, 
it would be nice and there was like in a international society so we could organize more social events dedicated to celebrate culture languages it doesn't have to be only for internationals but like yeah. just to have more space and more things happening um we're putting together an international society and i think it's coming out next week so Nice. I hope so you. Yeah. If you want to join, um, <laughs> we're going to be live, so come by. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so nice when you can actually get like a society together and yeah. actually, yeah. yeah, all celebrate each other's cultures. Yeah, and definitely. And everything. That's so cool. Um, and how about you? Have you had great support? Yeah, I've been uh, in touch with them uh, for a few times, and uh, the, re- the most recent thing, I guess, is uh, Christmas last year. Mm-hmm. And because of COVID, I couldn't go home for Christmas. And they were, like, very uh, caring if, if uh, I'm staying here or, like, all the students. And they even got me a Christmas present. Oh, oh so, so just, sweet. Because they knew that I'm staying here, you know. And they knew I couldn't fly home. So it was very sweet. And they were just uh, doing some, like, Christmas quiz. And at the day, I was really kind of, like, alone. So it was very nice to kind of have a chat with them. There were maybe just two students and Jane and Pavey, which was, you know, it was fine. Mm-hmm. But I was very happy that they just, you know, yeah. gave me a Christmas present and they were just, you know, asking if everything is all right. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, also I, I, I also experienced a trip with them. Uh, it was in my first year, I think. And we went to Oxford for like a coach trip, mm-hmm. which is also nice. very nice. It was just for the internationals mm-hmm. and maybe some like close friends. But it was... It, it was very nice that we just got like a trip for ten pounds, which is like very you know good wow. price. Yeah. Yes, go with your friends to Oxford just to explore and stuff. So yeah. good points for that. Oh, brilliant! Wow. Oh, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you wish you would have known before coming to live in the UK? Um, maybe how hard is to get a job, mm-hmm. because mm. it's been something that. Uh, the support group in, in Czech Republic uh, who helped me with the application, they were like, oh yeah, you can get a job, you can you can earn the money enough. But then, I don't know, maybe it's different in London and their universities, but here in Chichester, it's been quite difficult for me to get a job. And if I got the job, you know, the application process, it's like you apply for many places, then it takes like one or two weeks until they reply. Then in the next two weeks, you get you go for an interview. So then there's like a month gone and you didn't earn any pound, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and you're just like, okay, you know, what's, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? And because we are internationals, we don't get the student loan. You have, you have like a two types of student loan. One is for the uni and the second one is for like the living costs. Mm-hmm. So we have just one for the uni. And uh, then I was quite struggling because then there was like a Christmas when I actually got a job then there was Christmas and I went home. When I got back, they were like, oh, we don't need you anymore. You know, so it was like, it was very hard than the COVID. Mm-hmm. So no one could actually earn enough money. So it's been, it's been hard. And mm-hmm. especially for, um, I think the UK is like very, you know, like very rich country. So if we go here as internationals, our budget is very low and we have yeah. to count everything, yes. you know, yeah. because we don't have the loans, we have to earn it in a way on our own so that was something I've been kind of like struggling even now in my like after three years I still didn't have like the regular job when people Mm -hmm. go to it's just my experience you know but um yeah I've been in a few pubs and restaurants which is quite challenging as well because if they start talking to you and you don't get the accent straight away Mm -hmm. and then you reply and then understand you and then they're asking you for a coke and you're like what is coke and they're Coca Cola, and it's just like, <laughs> real, like an idiot, you know, because it's you know it's obvious. <laughs> so yeah, that's been quite like funny as well. But and I understand that they they don't want me there anymore. But it was it was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then you have to just find another ways how to you know how to work and yeah. some online stuff or you know babysitting, cleaning. Even though it sounds you know funny, it's it's well paid sometimes. Yeah. It is be- yeah. sometimes better than just you know. Being in a restaurant, smiling for eight hours, you know. Which is tiring. <laughs> yeah, so I think this, this has been, like, the most difficult part of the studies, the yeah. money. Yeah, it does sound really difficult, actually, yeah. yeah. And how about you? Is there anything you wish you knew before studying in the UK? Obviously, um, you've done it before. But... Yeah, um, I think I have quite a similar experience. Um, paperwork, in terms of um, only getting, like, a bank account, 
-hmm. it was hard. So I wish I knew that I had to do some things and get some proofs that I was a UK resident now and that I was studying on full time education. Um, because I didn't, I didn't even have the time to just be asking because I was at uni all the time. My courses is like very intense. All the banks are open in the morning. And it was just a pain just to get a normal bank account, like basic. I couldn't access to students' accounts because I was not a UK resident for like three years. And then the, the work thing is like, oh my God. You can open this question up to the room. Were there any culture shocks moving to the UK? Yes. Mm. Food. <laughs> say it say it <laughs> i wish i brought like a bag of food oh, from God. nigeria like i'm sorry to say this but what do you guys eat <laughs> i know right i don't get it like no it's not good that? food i'm not sure Just myself <laughs> <laughs> lots of chefs yeah, yeah. toast yeah. high so, toast yeah, yeah. So, breakfast. yeah. that's it <laughs> but when i taste it it's okay but it doesn't look appealing like, no no, no. Yeah, so food, mm. very important one. Yeah, but I try, and then there's a way I can go shopping. In Nigeria, if I wanted to cook something, I'll just go to a particular place. They have all the ingredients I need to mm -hmm. cook what I want to cook. But here, I have to go to Tesco. I need to go to Aldi. I need to go to get 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 get. get. Exactly. To make one meal. <laughs> kind of forage around. Yes. <laughs> it's quite difficult. Yeah, but oh, I need God. to eat. I need to survive. I need to do what I better do. <laughs> Yeah. You need to so do food. what you need yeah. to do. Yeah. Yes. What's your favorite meal from from home? Uh, um, egusi and pounded yam. Mm -hmm. what, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> it sounds very good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like, it sounds good. It's like it's a soup made with. Uh, it's, it's going to confuse you more. But it's like it's a soup made with leaves. You know, spinach mm -hmm. and uh -huh. egusi leaves. Then you know, seasoning, pepper. You know, all of that combined. Then you top it off with meat. Maybe uh -huh. beef or goat or chicken. Mm. Wow, <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Then you know yam. You mm. pound it. You boil it when it's okay, when it's soft. You pound it. Yeah. That's it. I've not made that here yet. Yet. Oh. <laughs> but I will. Sounds good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, food. Food is the main thing. Mm -hmm. And timetable in terms of food, it's another one. Mm. Yeah. But because Spanish people is very different. Like Yeah, I live with someone who's an international student from yeah. Spain. Um, really? Yeah. Who's that? Ivan. Ivan? Oh, you yeah. live with Ivan? Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> really? Everybody I used to work with him. Everyone here. Huh? Literally, I was having brunch with him. Oh, were you? Yeah. Oh, cute. <laughs> he, he eats like five meals a day. Yeah. He eats them quite late. So like, I'll be going to bed and he's in the kitchen cooking up a storm. It smells incredible. <laughs> <laughs> His food always looks incredible. And I'm just there eating like, my pesto pasta and cheese. And I'm happy and fine. But he cooks well. He does cook well. <laughs> what I'm hearing is a trip to Nigeria and Spain. Oh, Yes. I'm down. Yeah. Yes. yes. Should we go? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any culture shocks for you? Yes. Um, apart of, from food, it's uh, sometimes. <laughs> this don't get offended, okay? <laughs> British population, but sometimes, you know, in my country, we are very honest. We're just not yes. talking, you know the sauce around we just say it how it is mm -hmm. i'm not offending anyone i'm just i'm just saying the fact <laughs> and, yeah. and people here kind of prefer to be like very extremely gentle with every single word you say yeah but some group of friends they're just straightforward as well but not in public they're just like you know when they're close friends so sometimes i say something and they just like how dare you <laughs> you know and it's been <laughs> uh, you know, my friends know me, they, they, they're not offended anymore. But, you know, at the beginning, if you meet someone and they just, like, slap you in the face, you know, with their words, it was just, uh, it was quite like a, like a shock that I had to really reconsider what I'm saying and, like, specific words in the sentence, kind of, you know, be, be gentle. And uh, in a way, I, I prefer that as well sometimes, yeah. because when I go back to my country and they're just, like, talking, like, I'm just like, oh yeah, it really sounds rude, you know. <laughs> I, I I I can spot the difference now, but and sometimes it's uh, it's it works on this other way as well. But people tell me something, and I have like a good feeling, you know, how well I've done it, and then they're like, but if they said it's interesting, they don't like it, you know. Mm -hmm. That it, it's kind of like not being honest at the same time as like being honest and gentle. So it's quite hard to understand sometimes what people are saying, you know, 
it works both ways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does. It's that stereotype of the British being overly polite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> we confirm that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's nice politeness, but yeah, I, I feel like it, it hides what you feel yeah. in reality. Yeah, and I don't understand happy. that. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm so happy. Like I said, it everything's <laughs> but it's not, it's not it so sense. good to suppress everything. Like, show emotion. <laughs> Somebody hurts you, you say it. That's, mm. That's, mm. that's not good. But I'm enjoying the happiness, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you what have you made of the weather? Oh, the weather. <clears throat> I mean, the sunniest place in the UK. That's oh, the thing. Yeah, I'm quite surprised. Like I yeah. I think I cannot <laughs> complain because it is sunnier than I thought it was gonna be. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. But I kind of miss snow. To be fair, because in oh. my country we we don't have sea, but we have like all four seasons, like uh, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, oh, okay. including snow. And you know, in autumn, all the leaves are falling. It's really like three months each yeah. like, part. So when I'm here and it kind of looks very similar the whole year. I mean, I haven't been here uh, during the summer the whole time, but it's the same. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's sometimes quite confusing that, you know, in, in morning you can just go in your t-shirt, you can go out and, you know, then the sun goes, you know, behind the, the cloud and then you need to get like a winter jacket. So it's very like, in a way here it's extreme mm-hmm. and I would compare it to my country that we have like more like fluent, you know, progress. So I kind of miss snow here, but otherwise the sun, that's true. It's very sunny here, yeah. so I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. And it's, yeah, it, it's not that bad. Like people are talking about the UK as like, oh, it rains all the time and maybe in other places, but not here. No. Yeah. yeah, come here. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, no matter how sunny it is, it is not as sunny as where I come from. No. Mm. Where I come from, it's so sunny, you'll be sweating. Yeah. Go outside. I can't remember the last time I sweated here. Because <laughs> I, I had not sweat like no. And it's really cold. It's sunny and it's supposed to be hot, but it's cold for me. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's sunny, but it's not hot. It's like it's yeah. that kind yeah. of sun that doesn't really no. make you warm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just really cold. And cold cold breeze or, yeah. or rains. Oh, it's funny, it's like British hot. people are wearing shorts and you know, short t shirts. <laughs> and I'm like wearing scarf. And jacket and everything, and I'm like, are how we can in the you same go house? out dressed like that? Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> how? You just spot the British person cool? straight away. Yeah. <laughs> I see them with shorts. I see, I see ladies there everywhere. Like, I'm not cold. Yeah. Cover up. Cover up. <laughs> I'm freezing. I, but I can't tell them. I just, you know, go my way. But left to me, if you can leave me, and that person will be like, come, go and dress up. <laughs> you should be cold. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. sun is in the sky for five minutes and people yeah. are wearing flip flops. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And men with their tops off in the street. Yeah. Wow. Beer in hand. As soon as the sun's out. <laughs> it's the joy. It's the joy. But also, like in the night, like the British people are just, if you go party, they yeah. just don't wear a jacket at all because they don't want to pay the one pound for closet. Oh, yeah. You mm, know, and nice. they just go 20 minutes in the city just like in their nice mini dress. And I mean, like, good for them, but I would be freezing. I, I tried. Of course, I tried, you know, but it just didn't work for me. I would pay yeah. that one pound. I just think That's a pound. they will get a cold, but they never oh, get a yeah. cold from yeah. that. They and I get cold. the cold from the silliest thing ever. Exactly. And they just dress like with me dresses and like shorts and all that. They don't get colds. Do you get colds? Do I get colds? Yeah. Yeah, I'm freezing like right now. Oh my God. <laughs> but no, it's like a daily struggle. I'm like, what do I wear today? Because yeah. I'm going to go out and it's going to be boiling hot. And then by the time I have to walk home, I'm going to be like shivering yeah. Like, yeah. so much. But... I don't struggle. pay the pound for a, a jacket on a night out. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. That pound can get me a vegan sausage roll from Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not happening. Okay, that's the secret. That's Why? fair. <laughs> and is there anything you find that British people do that you find weird? Oh, yes. They put uh, vinegar on chips. Yeah. Oh, Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's it smells so funny. It's, oh, no. I mean, vinegar is a... You just cook it with something. You never eat it raw. Never, never. Like, it's, uh, I used to work in a fish and chip shop, so I'm like desensitized to vinegar. Like I can just load up my chips with it and I wouldn't even notice anymore. Wow. It's so good. Have you tried onion vinegar on chips? Onion? No. Not even apple vinegar Is that or anything. It just, it just smells it. so strong. It's good. Yeah. Game changer. Ooh. So vinegar on chips, anything that you've noticed? <laughs> oh, tea, tea and milk, but it, it's such a classic for you. Tea and milk. It's, yeah. not, it's not common around, like, anywhere in Europe and stuff. Oh. Just here. Just here? Yeah. I guess so that's why it's British. When someone it? asked me if I wanted tea, I was like, tea with milk, yes, please. And they were like, tea with milk? It's just a tea. 
Yeah, because you see it as a tea, but we see it as a tea with milk. With milk. Yeah. <laughs> I never knew that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apart from Weetabix. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I have another one. Sorry. It's a Which laundry one? machine in the kitchen. Mm. Yeah, that's normal for me. We have it in the bathroom. Bathroom? bathroom. Why? Yeah. Because, because oh, we, well, don't you don't have it in the kitchen. kitchen. I don't have it. I mean, in Spain, we have a separate room that is called... Laundry room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, how yeah. do I call it? I don't know. Sometimes it's in the terrace. But it's a closed terrace. Uh-huh. That's yeah. why it works. But never in a, never in a kitchen. In kitchen. Really? Yeah. Oh. I think it was like a safe, a safe, a space saving thing. Back yeah. In the day. Possibly. I think I it's weirder know. to have it in the bathroom. Yeah, well, I mean, there's like off. no it's just like, mm. get space for it, like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But but you know, like if if you have a living room and a kitchen together, and you're watching a TV, and then you have like the buzzing laundry machine, like five times a week. Okay, not five times a week, but you know, in a family or something, it can be like that. Then you just don't have the time to relax with the TV and something because it's always okay. there, you know. Point but taken. I, I feel like you're in you're in the kitchen, and there's already like the dishwasher on. The fridge, like you know, there are some machines happening. Like there's some <laughs> noise there, but then you're in the toilet, and you're going for number two. <laughs> oh my God. You really want to hear that? It's like dun, 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 dun. it doesn't let you concentrate. That's it. <laughs> but, oh. Yeah, enjoy the noise. <laughs> you enjoy the noise. Yeah, some of it. Some yeah. 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 Sleeping with the fan on. That's such oh. a common thing here as well. Oh, yeah, I no, don't but I do that. that. I couldn't. Like the noise? It's the noise again. Yeah. <laughs> but I had to do that in Spain because if not, I cannot sleep over the summer. Oh, because it's oh. hot, isn't it? Yeah, here it's, it's like cold. 45 degrees and you're like, mm-mm. Like sleeping with a window open and with a fan on right next to your head? Like, come on. Mm. I had nice. to do that because if not, I just cannot breathe. <laughs> <laughs> but in Spain, not in England. I don't, I don't see that. Yeah, I agree with you in England. I usually sleep with my window open. A little bit, with my radiator still on, which is awful for the environment. Yeah. I cannot <laughs> sleep with my window open in England because I'm very scared of spiders and I feel like there's going to be a massive spider getting in my room mm. at night and I'm not going to be able to see it and I'm going to wake <laughs> up having a spider in my head. Yeah, no, that's not a vibe. No, okay. no, Fair no. Enough. I'm scared. <laughs> okay, so we've established that British people are a bit weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay, cool. <laughs> we are as well, it's fine. <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> Um, is there anything that you want to bring up that you feel is important for people who are international students to know about studying at university or mm-hmm. moving across to the UK or Chichester in general? I mean, if I had to say like a, what I, apart from everything we say that is not so good and it makes you doubt or anything, I think coming to study in, like going abroad and studying is the best experience of your life. At least so far for me, it's been that way. Um, it, it just, it's for life. It's going to last your whole mm-hmm. life. and It's going to make you a whole different person and it's worth every minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my experience. <laughs> I'll leave that. Because you know about you. I would say it's the best and at the same time the worst experience. Because mm-hmm. like the emotions are so extreme. One day you're fine. You feel the support from everyone. You feel good. And then the other day you're just crying. Yeah. And I remember in my first year, I've never been a crying girl, you know, like the type of girl that cries a lot. I've never been like that. But coming here, I became one in a way because now I'm here alone without my family, without the support, without my friends. I have to I have to go shopping on my own, you know, and do everything. And there is like so much pressure and you just cry a lot. That's the thing. But it's not bad. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like you do it, you experience it, but... Uh, it's fine yeah and I would like to maybe bring up the music department here again mm. because um, especially the jazz department because we have so much opportunities where to perform like not so much we have like a weekly jazz nights where we can perform we can show w- what we want to do uh, there is everyone is re- really lovely and supportive and it's just it's just world in a world yeah, so we have like a community here and friends and you just, you can rely on people. You can tell them your secrets, you can ask for help and no one's judging you, no one's, you don't have to feel ashamed. And I really appreciate that there is a, uh, they mention a lot, like the mental uh, well-being and stuff. Like in my first year we had yoga as a, 
a class we like have to attend. Professional and... resilience. Sorry. No, professional resilience. Oh yeah, professional resilience, which was yeah. something I've never thought like why should I know that, but it's something I've been learning. You know, it helped me a lot since the first year and doing yoga and actually acknowledging that you know you have to think about as an artist how to relax and how to don't get overwhelmed. It's something really really important and especially in my country no one cares about your mental health if you feel sad like and what you just go and do it. It it becomes from from the past and um, you know from from the uh, system. But here, people are really caring, and it's it's very like eye opening. And as a as a leader or a teacher or a musician, I know that this approach really is gonna help me to uh, live my life. I want to do like in a healthy way, mm -hmm. and I think this university is very supportive for you know feeling fine and know how to clear everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> is there anything that you wanna add? Yeah, like she said, um, here. Chichester and University of Chichester to be specific, you have complete and utter freedom. In the same vein, you have people that want to help you whenever you need people to help you. You can't be lonely, even if you want to be lonely. It's mm -hmm. impossible. Oh, <laughs> like me right now, I live at the Pinewood house. If I want to stay alone, I just stay in my room. Or if I want to meet people, I just go to the common room. Yeah. There's always someone there. Whenever you want to talk about anything, however you're feeling, just start talking. Yeah. And you have people to continue your conversation. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Having so much fun. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Lots of positive experiences. <laughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> Finally, it's great. Right. It's really great. Yeah. 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 Really great. Also, yeah. like the open mics and in Z bar, you know, mm. the the clubbing part, also like a part of university in like a safe <laughs> environment. It's really, it's really nice. Yeah. yeah. I really appreciate it. That was something I've never thought about that I can just go clubbing, you know, on campus and yeah. karaoke, which is like full of empty students. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where I come from, all these things are dangerous. Mm -hmm. You want oh. to go clubbing, huh. but I go protected, I go with security. But here you can go clubbing and know that yes, nothing bad is going to happen to me. Yeah, yeah and so. also like the security is here. It's really I yeah. I was quite surprised how how in any club you go, or restaurant mm. in, in the evening there are always police or security, kind of like uh, you know making sure everything's going well. Yeah. And even though like we know something has happened, but they're just trying to prevent it and protect people which is really nice it's something yeah, i've never experienced in my yeah. in my yeah. country like in this intensity yeah. yeah yeah i do i do agree with that not only on security but like i feel students matter here like you have a voice and you have a lot of ways of just raising something that yeah. you that you want to raise <laughs> um there's a lot of things happening a lot of things improving because there's a good system just dedicated for students to talk about it and to do things. Mm -hmm. And that is something that is not so up to date in my country, like, yeah. yes. <laughs> and also like the whole yeah, SU voice. system that we yeah. have the societies here and we can run it by ourselves and being like protected by an organization. So we kind of run it by ourselves, but also if something happens, we're not alone in that, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? So we can just try, how would it be to run something? And you know, it's, it's great, yeah. it's really great. Oh, brilliant. So we've got lots of student support for you guys. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so finally, is there any advice that you'd like to give to someone who's applying as an international student to the University of Chichester? Any of you? <laughs> whatever you want, whatever you need, Pavi and Jane are there for you. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything, no matter how crazy Amen. it sounds, no matter how you feel, oh no, I don't need to ask this, it's used to ask them they will answer you to tell you something that can help you in your journey yeah mm -hmm. that's it yeah. they sound like icons i want to meet them <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 like anything's possible that maybe like covers everything here. every single thing yeah 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 Is Brenda, anything you want to add um i was just trying to think something different that hasn't been said <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i just want to say it's worth it um mm -hmm. for people that come from countries that um culture and art is not that appreciated there is a place here for you uh, that you're just able to you're going to be able to explore and to learn a lot of things and it's worth the hassle it's worth the money it's worth the change the cultural shock the going away from your family yeah, actually, it's yes. a lot but it's worth it yeah. um mm -hmm. yeah it's like challenge every day but it 
I, I, I've always felt like this university, it's, it's always there. It's not the problem. If I have my personal issues, it's fine. I can, I can deal with it. But then the university as, as its own, it's always there. It's a safe place. Mm -hmm. And I think not everyone can talk about like that about the university, but I can, and I'm very happy about it. That yeah. Yeah. uni is like here for us. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today. You guys have been absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. us. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if you want any more information, you can contact us on Instagram at the University of Chichester, or you can contact us on Twitter at Chai Uni, email us at studyhere at chai.ac.uk, or join the conversation on hashtag Chai Uni. Awesome. Thank nice. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>